Hello everybody, it's Curtis from Omaha Knife, and today I wanna to talk to you about sharpening ice auger blades. Now you ice fishermen stumbling across this uh, may not be familiar with us. We, we don't sell ice fishing stuff. We're a knife store, we do axes and lots of other cool things. Uh, we don't sell uh, replacement blades or ice augers or anything like that, but because uh, we've got a good reputation for a sharpening service, uh, we get to sharpen a lot of them. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about because we get some that have been sharpened at home or sent to, I don't know, lawnmower sharpening place or something like that, and just get the crap grind out of them and they get ruined. So um, that's what I wanna to talk to you about. This video may be more about what not to do than what to do, but we're gonna cover some what to do also. And if you don't know who we are, uh, you can obviously find us on YouTube and Omaha Knife, but also our uh, Facebook and Instagram are Omaha Knife as well. So take a look at some of our other videos if you're into knives, uh, axes, and other cool toys. So um, the green tape on this one is just covering the customer's last name. It doesn't mean anything otherwise. So let's move this aside and I'll show you some problems with four blades that a gentleman brought in and cover some what not to do's and then we'll do some to do's. Now I'm filming this myself. If you watch the other, uh, any of our other videos, you'll see that we don't make a big production of it. Um, we're just trying to get information out. We're not trying to sell anything. We're just trying to help people. Uh, it's being filmed on an iPhone 10. Uh, I happen to be working on, so this is what now 2021 today's whatever the Sunday after new year's day. Uh, from the holidays and also I had COVID right before that. So I'm just behind on sharpening uh, and have been working weekends. And when you spend a little time on each thing, sharpening takes a lot of time. So hopefully by the time I leave today, I'll actually have everything caught up. But uh, back to these blades. We're gonna look at each one uh, of these four and I'll try to tell you what's wrong with them. Um, on, and again, I'm holding the phone myself on our other videos, Ann holds, and she does a good job of being in the right place and being in focus and all that. Um, so on this edge, you can see that it's coarse. And I suppose coarse itself is not necessarily all that bad. Uh, yeah, it probably is because when you're coarse down here, um, the little pieces, you know, if it's coarse, you're gonna, it's gonna be a little bit toothy, but those teeth are gonna be a little bit weak and wanna roll over. But, and I'm gonna tap on it, see if I can get better focus. So you see how ground up that is. And yeah, there we go, that shows it a lot better. And then see on the edge, it's, I can't point to it because both hands are busy, but see, I'm getting the light to glare on that edge where it's done really steep. So the person who did it wanted to get it, uh, feeling sharp faster, so increase the angle. Well, that's bad, that makes a mess of it. So let's get to the back side and I'll show you some other problems, I think, yeah. So where's it at here? So see where extra is ground and it cups in? So I'm going to sharpen these, and I already talked to the customer, uh, and he agreed that he's gonna try them out. If they cut, great. If they don't cut, he's just gonna throw them away because uh, too much will have been ground away at that point. Now, I'm not a nice fisherman, so uh, I do fish. I like to, I like to fish, but I, I've just never uh, uh, been into ice fishing. This one doesn't look as bad, uh, at least on the screen here. Um, so I don't ice fish, so I haven't used these. So I don't have the experience to know when you've removed this much steel or if they get this crooked, uh, then they're no longer gonna cut. Now, actually, I think I've sharpened this blade before up in here that um, is pretty clean, but let's look at the edge. They've been, eh, I don't think it's showing up. Um, they, they've been touched up. It was touched up a little, oh no, the, the, this is where this one was, I looked at them uh, in advance. This is where this one was touched up. So probably the owner did this. He cheated because as it got dull, he went to the back side and took a little bit off. So if you take your finger and go like that, right now that feels sharp. But it's not gonna cut right because you need a straight line right here. It changed the angle and now it's not cutting in like it's supposed to. Uh, you probably have, look at your lawnmower blade, right? Uh, it's only sharpened on one side because it needs that bottom edge to line up square, if I'm saying that right, to wind up square with the grass tops. Um, same thing on this. So this blade 
depending, if somebody comes in, there's very much of that, I just tell them they're ruined, throw them away and buy more. Now, a new set of blades isn't uh, a whole lot of money. If they were expensive, uh, you know, I would do more work on them, but I don't want to do a ton of work for something uh, that they can replace relatively inexpensively. So this looks like the mate, uh, I was gonna say the mate to the one I sharpened before, but no, that's too coarse of sharpening. Uh, but you see there's two levels of sharpening here, the coarse at the top and then that second level. So these have been sharpened twice because the factory sharpening uh, is more consistent, you know, it's done on the machine, more consistent than that. But see, this one also has that on the backside. And see, it's kind of higher there, so just a lot of steel removed. So when I say a lot of steel removed, here we go. Um, whoever did this is the one that removed too much steel. And it probably caught, if they didn't do this at the same time, it probably cut being, being crooked. Then as they got dull, he tried to cheat and go to the backside. So one more, and this is another really bad one and, and probably a lot like the second one we looked at. Um, tapping the screen for focus. Yes, yeah, so you can see how coarse that was and see the two different levels. So this one has been sharpened at least twice and the upper with the straight lines, um, let me just touch so we're clear I, if it even matters. So that was done prior to out here on the edge. This probably cut okay. And, uh, but that steeper angle, I don't know, maybe that's still cut uh, too for a little bit. And then the backside of this one. So it doesn't have that, uh, what do we want to call it? Counter cut or whatever. It's done correctly where it's not sharpened on the bottom, but you see it's a little bit higher there. So, so just, um, was on a power machine and they just powered away cutting, uh, removing steel. Now, this is one that I just did for a customer and, you know, his name is on it and covered up. Um, can we get it to Claire? So now inconsistencies you see in my work in the glare, um, these weren't that dull and I'm not seeing, actually I'm not seeing them now. There was some spots where the original sharpen, yeah, there we go. Oh, oh you can't see what I'm seeing. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so there, there was some spots that uh, didn't need a lot of work. Let's look at the backside on this. Um, so, you know, there's no counter grind or whatever. If you see what looks like a little, let me explain that to you. Uh, there is no counter grind, it's just cleaning up the burr that came from the front. So when you're sharpening, where am I? When you're sharpening, you get some burr hanging off here. And if you're not familiar with the term in sharpening, I'm going to explain it uh, this way. When you were a kid, riding your bike, crashed your bike and skinned your hand, uh, at the end of the scrape, there was that loose skin hanging off there. And if you were smart, you'd grab it, tear it off while your hand is still numb. Uh, so think of that same thing with the metal here when you sharpen, there's a little bit hanging over the edge and you have to get rid of that. So you take something really fine and just clean up that edge, but you don't change the angle, you're just getting rid of the burr. So uh, I think I covered all of that well enough about um, uh, what bad is. Well, let's talk a little bit more about bad. I, I've got more information, so don't give up on the video yet if you didn't hear what you were hoping to hear. Um, none of these have been done with a Dremel. Uh, I did one yesterday, well, it wasn't, it wasn't an eye socket blade, it was actually a knife, uh, a homemade knife that had been sharpened with a Dremel. And what happens, a Dremel does little cups. So there'll be like a cupped out spot here, then it hops up and another cupped out spot. So you have this real irregular edge. None of these were done on a Dremel. Uh, even though there's a low spot, if it was done with a Dremel, it would be a very small low spot like that. Uh, Dremel bad, never do the underside. And if you are going to do it, you know, no bench grinder, really no power tool, unless you're really good with your power tools and understand the concepts, then, you know, hopefully your power tool has a super low speed and all that. But if you have those skills, you're not watching this video, I'm guessing. So how would I recommend that you sharpen? 
it gets a little tricky for a couple reasons. Now, uh, this blade, where? Uh, this blade, uh, the angle does change a little bit when you look at it, see it's steeper here than it is here. Uh, and these, this style changes a lot. I don't need to show you guys probably because you have these things. So it changes a lot on this style. If you have the, I don't remember what they're called, something king, and they're real flat and straight and have some big notches out, those you can just sharpen on a uh, bench stone. And I don't have one of those here to show you, strike king, uh, or that's what people call them, strike kings. Um, you know, those you can just put on a uh, regular bench stone and just, um, you know, sharpen them like you would a knife. These are trickier. So let's, uh, we're gonna look at sharpening methods. Uh, regular bench stone, hold on. Uh, I'm making a mess of this, aren't I? Um, regular bench stone, if you try to put this on, you know, of course it's not gonna work because it's curved uh, and on a flat surface. Um, and you would never want to do that way. You have to do it that way. So if you were going to do it this way, all you could do is go down the corner of your stone, right? But then you're going to mess up your stone. You're going to round off your stone. It's like, okay, what if we get a smaller stone? This stone's one inch wide. Well, you're still, grand gray is maybe not going to show the best. You're still going to be hitting the corners of your stone. You can get parts of it. Um, and you see me wiggling it, by the way, when you're doing something like this, you can wiggle and find the flat spot. It's set and completely flat, so my angle is correct. But a lot of this one is not going to, I've got a flat spot, but you get over here a little bit flat, and there it's not. So you can't do that. This one might, So except it rolls. I'm gonna exaggerate, it rolls this way. I'm not on the edge, I'm tilting it down. It rolls that way. Uh, so again, not ideal. What about a puck like you would do an ax? Uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, you, you could maybe do that. See, we've got that small flat spot there. Now this particular puck is a Grand's Force. Um, if you're not familiar with it, handmade axes, you know, really, uh, really quite a high-end ax. This, this sharpening puck is 50 bucks. Um, you know, you could do that, especially if you have axes and want, um, you know, want to be able to sharpen your axes in the field and kind of do everything. There are cheaper pucks out there. They're not as good. Uh, that's up to you to decide what's good enough. Something that actually, so when you're fishing uh, and you're near a gravel road or whatever gets that grit um, into the ice and you ding your blade, having something like a Spyderco Sharp Maker, um, by the way, I hope I didn't flip this phone over in this whole process and have part of this be upside down. I don't do a lot of videos. I'm trying, trying to get rid of some background stuff here. Okay, so Spyderco Sharp Maker. I don't love this system for sharpening, but there's a lot of things you can do with it. Now, you can say I've got a dark stone here, a white stone there. They're, they're ceramic, but we call them stones. Um, and th those are different grits. The, the brown is the more coarse grit, but it's still really fine. The rods are to protect your hand, so when you're bringing a knife over, if, if you go on the backside, you catch that, not, and, and so you don't hit your hand. Um, th this is the case, folds up in there. Now, now this is 40 degrees, uh, which is 20 and 20. Uh, over here is 15 and 15 for a total of 30 degrees, so whichever angle you want. Now, if you buy one of these, and I should have looked at the price, we do sell uh, this system, but it's, I don't know, maybe 70 bucks, I, I, I don't remember. But uh, it's not bad, you, you could have it in your pack. Um, when you're fishing, the groove, can we see the groove? That groove is for sharpening fish hooks. Uh, you can also touch up your fillet knife, and the way this is meant to work as a sharpening system, uh, you just hold your blade straight up and down. I'm not going to look very graceful doing this because I'm watching the screen, not looking at the system. So the blade straight up and down and the angle is established. And then you come to the other side. If you're, if you have a serrated blade, you, uh, turn it to the small angle ink to get inside the serrations. This one isn't, but this is just a junker knife from our sharpening demo table. Um, you know, you can do any blade on that, but that's made for serrations, and then you would 
uh, do it flat for sharpening. But if you're going to do your ice auger blades, take it, well, the brown, uh, but I've got one of those loose already. So you're going to take it and you get those dings. Now this is the back side of the blade. You get those dings from hitting uh, a piece of grit in the ice and it dings to the back side. So if you run your finger over it now from, from bad sharpening, that has burr sticking up. Um, so you take the blade, you don't want it to be necessarily flat, flat on it. It's a curved surface uh, in this case, so you're not gonna be truly flat. You don't wanna be steep either. Uh, you just wanna be a low angle. So you get a ding from a piece of gravel, pull this out of your pack and work it. I can't hold it, so I can't actually do it. But you know, work it and then feel the ding. You're just trying to get rid of the ding. You're not trying to change it, or you're specifically trying to not change the shape of the blade. And so you're working the ding that you put in it. And then let's pretend, yep, now I'm satisfied that's that. And then you're gonna turn it over. I can't do it uh, correctly. Can I get focused on the spot? And then match that angle. See, you know, you rock until you feel the angle and then, you know, work the thing on this side. Now, if your blades are just getting dull and you want to use this stone to sharpen them, it's gonna be a long time, a lot of work. And I think most people are gonna give up, think they're not doing it right and give up or increase their angle but you have to match that angle for it to be correct that you go steeper you can get it to seem sharper faster but they picked this angle for a reason uh i won't go into that just believe me they did being off a tiny bit fine uh but you go substantially different and it's not going to be the same so you get it dinged get rid of the dings with one of these uh, and even tinker with touching up with this, but when you start getting bored, just stop working uh, and take it the way it is or send it to somebody who has a good reputation for sharpening. Keyword, um, you know, good reputation because uh, if that was paid work, and I've seen uh, paid work, mail order paid work that's terrible. Let me try to get it to focus. And I've seen uh, paid mail order work that's pretty good. I'm not asking for you to mail us uh, these because I'd rather not. <laughs> Honestly, I hate doing them. Um, but I, I want to help you and give you some pointers. Now, if you have nowhere else to turn, you know, I'm not going to tell you. I won't sharpen them for you. But trying to help you out a little bit so you can uh, maintain your own stuff. Um, there's one other thing that you can do for sharpening. So see the size of this? You know, it's triangular, right? Get a dowel you know, wooden dowel or anything round that size and sandpaper. Uh, if you're wanting to do it yourself, um, and it can be anything, uh, just running things through my head, the handle of a crescent wrench or whatever, anything that you can count on being flat. And then uh, different grits of sandpaper, let's say start, so this is if you wanna do a full, uh, try your hand at a full sharpening. Start at say 150, so you're pulling the sandpaper around uh, your tool or dowel or whatever and pulling it tight. Now you have to go this way on it because there's gonna be a little bit of a ripple. You're not gonna be able to stretch it tight. So if you're going this way on it, you're gonna mess it up because it's gonna push a ripple ahead and screw up your edge. So if you're gonna do sandpaper wrapped in something, uh, you've gotta go that way. And of course, uh, something longer where you can do longer strokes and then you have to feel this angle and match it. When you think you're losing the angle, just stop and refeel and maybe back up a little and start on. If you hit the top side too much, it's gonna make it harder to uh, feel your angle. So as soon as you get off, um, stop and, and get back on. And I already said, don't go too steep. So if you're gonna do that, you can start at 150. Um, when you get a burr, so you flip it over and look at the back side. Tap the focus here. Look at the back side. Remember what we talked about, that, that bit of skin on your hand from wrecking your bike. But right there, and actually where I'm touching, may be some burr, because this is one of those that had a lot of burr. Let's see. Let's see if I can zoom and actually make burr show up. I don't know. On my screen, I can't tell if we're seeing it or not. Um, yeah, we won't take any more time on that. Um, 
But anyway, it, it'll be up there. And, and to see the burr, you know, roll it uh, and look for light to catch on it. And there, there's more than one angle where you can see the burr. So get the light to catch on it. And you, you don't, don't worry about getting it. I can feel that burr right there. Let's try again to see it. Again, on, on your screen, you may be able to see it right on the edge. I don't on mine. Um, so anyway, uh, so you get the burr uh, most of the way with the 150 and then get um, 320 uh, or 400, 280, something that's half uh, the grit size. And then with that, you're just cleaning up the deep scratches you put with the 150, if that makes sense. So you've already got it sort of sharp, you're just refining it, making it finer. You can stop at that at the 320 or whatever, or if you wanted to go further, you can. I would probably stop at the 320, especially if you have a ceramic stone that you can get rid of the burr. Now to get rid of the burr, I'm thinking on this, I didn't uh, think this far ahead when I was talking, to get rid of the burr, if you finished it with 320, that burr is gonna wanna hold on a little bit, uh, but you can still get rid of it. So real low angle, let's see if I can try to get something to show up here. So we're looking at a different blade, of course. Um, so getting rid of the burr, so there we've matched the angle, or let's pretend we have even if we hadn't, and getting rid of the burr, go something like that, up just a little, and like single pass. Now this one's been sharpened, so I'm not contacting it. Uh, single pass, then flip it back over, and you know match the angle, and single pass, and just back and forth with really light pressure. Oh, and light pressure the whole time really is important. Um, now on this one, did I, I, I thought I saw some burr, but maybe it's just shining where I cleaned the burr off. I'll, I'll check it later. Um, the, so anyway, get rid of the burr that way. You can also drag it on, uh, leather to get rid of the burr. This is the one I sharpened. Um, or I don't know if the burr is that big of a deal on uh, an ice fishing thing. The ice is gonna drag the burr off. So if you have a little bit of burr left, it might not matter. Now, one thing that I do, uh, I put painter's tape on them when I'm done and I always write on the painter's tape, something to the effect of leave tape on until blade is mounted, something like that. Uh, whoops, cause it's uh, sharp enough you can cut the crap out of yourself. Uh, you, you don't necessarily need to try to do that for, for years, just make it better than it was. Some people tell me that with their gas machines, it wants to dig in, after I've sharpened them, it wants to dig in so much they have to pick up on their machine or it's gonna dig in and uh, bog down the machine. Uh, so it doesn't have to be that sharp, just sharp enough that you can cut ice well. Um, let me, I, I made a couple notes, like six though, because I didn't really know what I was gonna say. Um, uh, I don't know if I said this. Uh, the good blades uh, will be marked made in Sweden or Mora. The ones made in China are cheaper. And Oh, I'm zooming on the wrong one. Okay, so see that one says Sweden. I think these said Mora. Um, where are we at? Uh, Mora. Uh, Mora or Sweden, because uh, Mora's in Sweden. Uh, you want it to say that on your blades. If they're made in China, Again, I don't ice fish, I just sharpen them. But when I sharpen these things, the China ones are really soft steel compared to these Mora. Uh, before I did this video, I did look that up and I, I, I wasn't trying to be like really accurate. I just tried to find some blades that looked alike. The, uh, the China ones, I found uh, an example of them being $14 and the Mora ones seem to be pretty easy to find at 24. Spend the 24. The extra 10 is well worth the stronger steel that's going to stay sharp longer. So uh, I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you would give us a like on this video. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. I personally am not that much into social media. So sometimes uh, a fair amount of time passes. And I'm like, oh yeah, I better make sure nobody had any questions. But I'll answer anything if I can. You can also email the store. Our website is, oh, hold on. Our website is omahanife.com. 
Uh, and I think I already said you can find us on Instagram, of course, YouTube, and also Facebook. We do a lot of knife stuff, uh, a lot of cool things all in all. So uh, maybe we have some other stuff. Um, I noticed that that was still on the table. This is an old Swedish made, like World War II vintage uh, ax head. Uh, has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It just happened to still be on the table. So looking around the table, see if there's anything I forgot. I think that covers it. So uh, appreciate if you stuck around to the end of this video and we will talk to you another time. Thank you. Okay, so the video was done. I said goodbye and everything. Went home, had lunch, uh, came back and was working on stuff again. I hadn't done these blades yet uh, because I told you I don't really like doing them. Uh, I saved them for last. It's like, I don't know, five or six o'clock now. And when I was working on them, I had some thoughts about the video. And I also realized that you guys probably really wanted to see them uh, when they were done. So I... I uh, decided to come back and add to the video. Now, if the video already said goodbye and all that, it's because I didn't know how to edit it and get rid of that. And neither did uh, Anne, uh, who normally shoots these videos. I'll turn it over to her. But anyway, so this is actually the third time I've done this part because during the first one, somebody called and it made the recording stop. I didn't realize that. And so I finished the video and only had half of it. I didn't answer the phone or anything. It just stopped recording when I muted the ringer or whatever. Um, and then I did the second one and it was oriented the other way when I got done. And so now it's the third time to do this last part. The first one was a single take, so I don't know. Uh, I guess it just goes with uh, how much I dislike working on ice auger blades. But anyway, uh, they came out fine. And, uh, oh, I want to show you something else. Uh, I, I sharpened some other stuff first. And one thing that I had to sharpen was these uh, apparently handmade scissors. Not that they're any big deal. They're just kind of cool. Uh, you see the, um, you know, the, the blade. Where's my pointer? Here we go. Um, you know, the, the way it's made. Any knife maker... Uh, who, who has any talent at all could do this. Uh, th these are just interesting. You don't see stuff like this, but you see the, the continuous piece. It's not that they're fantastic. They're just interesting. So I did those um, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. But when I had to redo this video, it's like, hey, let's show those because I like to uh, show neat things. Uh, also, when I was working on it um, and thinking about it, uh, I, I decided that, that I do want to actually recommend Spyderco Sharp Maker for you guys. I went ahead and checked the price in at $73.50 at the time of making this video. It's a current product and we have them in stock. If you're going to buy one, we'd like to have you buy it from us at omahanife.com. We don't do these videos to sell products or to get a bunch of followers or anything like that. We just do them to help you. But if you're going to buy it, uh, you know, we would like you to uh, buy it from us. But let me show you this kit. So it um, kind of snaps together and pulling the top off. Um, yeah, uh, I, let, let me just show you how it looks. Uh, I, I don't have everything in it. I, I just have the one side. So here's the, I think they call it medium and fine, but more accurately, it's fine and extra fine. That's one of my objections to this uh, kit is, is that the grits are so fine that it takes forever uh, to, uh, to get anything done. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the reason I like it for you guys, you can touch up your fillet knife. Uh, or keep your fillet knife sharp because a fillet knife doesn't uh, generally require a lot of work. They're kind of soft in general. Um, the, the system, let, let me say, it, it would have, you know, two brown and two white. I just have the one, I don't know where the other white is. The other brown one is uh, here. Uh, but we kind of talked about it before. But I do like it. Remember, there's the groove for sharpening your fish hooks. It's something that you can take in your backpack when you're fishing uh, summer or winter to uh, touch up your fillet knife and hooks. And in the wintertime, um, your auger blades, you know, you hit some gravel or whatever, you can get rid of those dings. Now, I don't know if I said this in the first part. If you get a ding, uh, you just want to get rid of the high spots on the ding. Now, that's not a ding. I don't, we'll, we'll brush off whatever that is here in a sec, uh, I'm guessing. Let's pretend there's a ding right there. Uh, you would use the stone to get rid of the ding parts that stick off because it would have a part that's like flattened inward and then some that squishes uh, in this image. We'll call it squishes up and squishes down. So we want to use the stone, uh, match it with the flat surface and get rid of what squishes up uh, and then flip it over. 
here. Let's just see. If, yeah, maybe that is really something. Just a spot. Um, just spot the, the light catches where I didn't get it uh, perfectly smooth. I didn't notice that in any of the previous ones. Um, but in the back, uh, on the back side, it's important that you you don't want to be exactly flat. And one of these I, I got a little too flat. Can we? Uh, you can only kind of see it right on the edge here, whereas a little too flat and was contacting it up here right on this end. Uh, you want to contact the first millimeter, we'll say, but uh, get rid of the of just the metal that is mushed up so that you get back to a flat surface. And then in the field, that's absolutely all you want to do. And if it cuts great, that's still all you want to do. Um, and, you know, that, that's on dings. I've seen blades, people brought them in where something happened and they, and they got set on concrete without the cover. And that can really make a mess, but just get rid of those high spots and see how it cuts. So uh, let's just look at these. We'll look at this pair first. Now these were, um, uh, they were the ones that, that looked ugly, but they hadn't been sharpened on the backside. Um, the, they, they weren't as bad as I thought. They didn't take that long. Uh, now, when we look at the back side of this pair, or yeah, of these, so you can see if I can get my pointer into the image, where is it? Um, you, you can see where I cleaned off the burr. I'm trying to get there. Where I cleaned off the burr, that's you know way less than a millimeter of shine there, where I just got rid of um, that burr hanging over. Now getting rid of the burr can be tricky. It can take a few passes, but it's better, I think, better to leave some burr and let the ice take it off than to work it too much and change your angle uh, on either side of the blade. Uh, I hope I hope that made sense. So that was the darker two. Uh, these two uh, were the ones that have been worked on the backside, and I had to remove, I don't know, a millimeter or a um, couple millimeters of metal because being sharpened on the backside. Here, we'll flip one back over. So remember we had that sharpened spot that was, I don't know, that far back or something. Uh, had to just get rid of that metal because it has to, uh, if we didn't, the way it was, the ice is contacting here. And if the edge is set, in this case, towards the tabletop a little bit, of course it's upside down, so the orientation's opposite. But um, with that, the, the sharp edge won't touch. The top of that little bevel is what would be riding on the ice. Maybe I need to... Um, draw that to be sure everybody gets it. So the ice is right here. Well, well, we'll call it that line. See, you can't have, you have to have that point there. If you come on the back and sharpened it up like that, this, let's zoom in a little more so I can point better. So you've sharpened up like that and it feels sharp if you touch there, but the ice is touching there where it's not sharp at all. And then it's just going to slide on the ice. So, um, Zoom back out. Okay, I, I didn't start that over. I stopped the video, but we'll, we'll patch that back together. So, um, so anyway, so I squared these up. Remember how they were wavy? Uh, got the straight line. Not sure that matters. Um, but uh, the, the thing is on these, uh, since I don't go use them, I can't try things and then go see how it works out. So I, I have to guess when you take things like like barber shears and hairstylist shears, they have to be perfect or they're not going to work. You take a kitchen knife, there can be a lot wrong with it and it'll still cut fairly well. And I don't know between those two extremes where ice auger blades fall in. I would guess closer to a kitchen knife, but if I'm going to be working on them, I don't want to uh, say, oh, that's good enough and send them home with somebody they take their day off, go ice fishing, and have it uh, be a bad experience for them. So, anyway, um, what were we, did I get all the highlights? I hope so, because I've done this video uh, now three times. I'm not sure what I've said on this video and, and what I haven't, but you, 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 you can see the work. Um, oh, the angle, so I took a lot off of this, and then to try to get this angle back, um, well, I, I don't know if the angle was bad or not, but I removed a lot and, and kept that angle, but used these as a reference. Uh, so if you look, 
Now, now see it's a shorter angle here, or the bevel grind, shorter distance here than here because the blade twists. Um, using these as a guide, I, I think I got them close. I, I, I think they're pretty close to where they were, and I think they need to be pretty close it, because if, if they're too, um, if they're too, we'll call it shallow of an angle, so if the top of the grind thing was clear back here, then that would make the edge weaker. Uh, and it needs to get thick fast enough to support the edge. But if, if, it's, if that's too far forward, then it's too steep or kind of too blunt and it won't cut. So um, when they figured this stuff out originally, they went to the angle, they tried it, they, they experimented, and they did the angle that they thought all things considered was the best angle. So um, anyway, I'm going to uh, try to cut some paper and I need to prop this up um, and then uh, show you that. So I mean, this is one of the newer ones because I cut away a lot of metal uh, on these. I, we should have a nice clean edge. And since I've done the video three times, I already know it's gonna cut. Plus of course I cut. You don't go on camera if you don't know that it's gonna work, but uh, so, so just holding the paper and am I still, yeah, you can see me. So just push into the paper. Um, and now does it have to be that sharp? Nope, absolutely not. Um, but in this case, you know, to get the job done, to get rid of all the icky, uh, all the nastiness, it just winds up that sharp. Uh, if you're doing it with a sharp maker, do not try to get it to do that. Get it sharper than it was and see how it cuts on ice. If it cuts ice, it is sharp enough. Uh, I think I've hit on everything and I know I've taken a lot of your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can uh, post comments if you have any questions. I think I said before that I'm not real good at the social media stuff, so I don't always get to um, the questions and comments very fast. But uh, if you have a question or if there's another video you want to see us do, uh, you know, we're happy to do that. Just post it in the comments and uh, we'll, we'll try to answer your question or accommodate your video request. Uh, you can visit us all the time on Instagram and Facebook, and then we occasionally do these videos. And of course, the website is omahaknife.com. And we've got a regular retail store. And it's actually La Vista, a suburb of Omaha, normal business hours, Monday through Friday, a shortened day on Saturday. So uh, do come and see us. We're gonna wrap this video up and we will see you next time.